Hey, so uh, as it turns out, Africa is the cradle of mankind. But the ironic thing is a lot of people don't know the African creation story. How life actually began from the African perspective. And uh, since all life started in Africa, it's only right to know how the story uh, emerged out of Africa. How it was actually taken, how it was explained, and how it was uh, related. Because we know that uh, humanity started in the motherland. So this is where the, the world began. So everyone is a descendant from Africa. So the reason is every, everyone who descends is supposed to ascend. Just the same as everyone is a descendant of the first grade. So, so that you can pass the first grade, you have to be in the second grade. You have to do better. So um, this is how we relearn, keep on learning, and keep on understanding. So the story of the African creation is very interesting. So um, we're, we have the story of the Garden of Eden. We have Adam and Eve and a snake. And in the African story, of course, we have a man, a woman, and a snake. So in the African story, the difference is we have a man and women. So what happened is this. Um, the god called uh, Maori. Maori is the god that... Uh, is the god we still call Mwari. So the way that we see this god is actually a god who we say Mwari, who is Maori. And uh, he is the one who uh, is in everything, Maari. He is what he is. Ari Raari. So Maari, Maari, Mwari. So this is actually uh, funny that um, um, Mari and Mwari, God and money, have the same ring to them. Mari is God. Uh, Mwari is God. Mari is God. Is gold. So gold and God, just the same way, that they have the same ring to it. Because it's very easy to confuse the two. <laughs> this is something that you have to understand. And from the African perspective, this has been our problem. Because the people who we worshipped Mwari and the people came for Mari to Africa. So the problem is that we have God and we have money. Because God is rich, the richest guy. Um, in, uh, I'm forgetting the verse. Is it Habakkuk? Probably not. But Zephaniah, I don't know. But when God says the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Meaning that it is in him. It is what he actually made. So it is all in the motherland because that is where it is. So, <clears throat> so Maori, Maori, Maori created the first, the first man. So the first man from Maori was called Moetzi, Moetzi, which is Moetzi. So the first creation of God was the moon. So God created the sun, which is the S-U-N. And then from the sun, we derive the moon because the moon is the reflection of the sun. So the first creation is that reflection of the sun. So the first creation, just like uh, we'll make uh, this in our image and in our likeness. So the first creation is in the image and the likeness of the sun. So the sun is the S-O-N, the S-U-N, which is the moon, because the moon reflects the sun. So that is the likeness and the reflection of it. But here's the thing. The, the Mwetsi was actually created and placed under the sea in the Dziva, which is the deep. So he was in the sea for a long time until uh, he talked to God, like, all right, God, you've given me this horn. He had this horn. The horn is a symbol of power. In this horn, he had a certain special oil called the Ngona oil. So in this horn, he had this um, special power that can produce fire, that can produce lightning, and that can give life. So he's like, all right, you've given me this stuff, but I'm still under the sea. Please, can I just go to the surface? I want to experience the, the life under in, 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 in the surface. Please, can I just do that? And then, so... So then um, he swam up 
And then God is like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Because if you go to the surface, you start breathing air, you will lose your immortality. So it's like, nah, this is what I want. And this is what I'm going to do. It's like, all right, cool. It's your choice. So he had uh, his own idea, his own choice. So then he swam up and then he went on the shore. And uh, he saw that the, the earth was just deserted. There was nothing. There was just uh, stone. There was the water and there was land and that's it. It was just land, flat land, no tree, uh, no nothing, just rocks and land. Okay, so on this um, earth, this is when he discovered that, okay, fine, there's nothing. So he started crying and crying and crying. And then uh, Maori, God, Maori, said that, all right, fine, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a woman. So you're going to have to live with this woman for only two years. So <clears throat> this is when we get the idea of the, uh, the numbers, right? So for two years, there were two people. So it's like, all right, cool, thanks. And then the woman comes, and then this woman is called Masasi. So this woman called Masasi comes through, and then she is actually called uh, the Morning Star because she is the first woman that he had. So Masasi comes... And Masasi comes with a fire-making device. And then she's like, oh, let's actually make a fire. Let's kindle the fire. And then uh, we'll, we'll have the fire. And then they're like, all right, cool. So that they found a cave. And then they went in, in there. And then they created a fire. So this fire was created through two elements again. Two again. These two elements, I don't know where they came from. Because it was all flat, right? But then this element, one of them is just uh, like the, the wood type of stuff and uh, the other one is called the rusika which means kusika which means creator so this is something that you use to make food because your food creates your body so this is something that you use to stir a pot so when you create a fire it actually is a spire like it starts burning like a spiral that's the fire so they created fire with fire. So this is actually something else. And it's uh, embodied in this story as that, as just this wood and this stick. But it's more than that. So they create the fire and then they, they sleep on opposite sides of the fire. <clears throat> so, so they're sleeping on opposite sides of the fire. So, so here, something that you have to understand is that the fire represents something. Some, the fire represents the human body. It represents heat. It represents light. Because this light, we have two lights. This is one from Maori, from God, who creates the sun and created the moon. So uh, the sun is a reflection. The moon is a reflection of the sun. So, so uh, we have the light from the sun. And then we also have the fire from the earth. So this fire is the other fire that we create on the earth. But this one has to consume so that it can emit. So um, when we have this fire, this represents the human body. Because we're all made of uh, the same ground. So we come out of the ground and then we're born of this. So um, in the same way that this fire represents the, the female genitalia the female area because this is how people burn with passion because of this fire that is kindled so this is something to do with passion this is something to do with the the idea like a bit romantic the idea of uh, matching the idea of um of of of, of you know candlelight dinner so you light a fire on top of your table. So this is where it starts, right? Because it's the two. So both of them are on the uh, on sitting around the fire. So <clears throat> actually, the, the other guy is just thinking to himself, like, ah, oh, man, what am I going to do with this woman? Because I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with her. So so then they just so then they're just sitting there, and um, they have this musika thing, right? And then they're just sitting there, and I just drew something like it's a really rough sketch. So, so this is where the fire is in the middle, and then we have the man and the woman on opposite sides. So, as you can see, this is the, the yin yang symbol, which symbolizes male and female. This is the two again. So, in the garden, we have Adam and Eve. And when you know this, when you know the miracle numbers and everything, you know that everything comes from one. So, everything came to two from one so everything came 
to two years for the one guy. So um, he's like, all right, um, what am I going to do with this woman? So then he doesn't know. So then he gets his horn, the Angona oil horn, and then he just dips his index finger, and then he touches this woman. So he just touches her with his finger around the fire. So this is how the movement works. The rusika is to stir, and then this movement is just him transporting himself to her. So this is now starting a different cycle. So when he did that, he touched her, and then when he touched her, she, uh, she, she, she like, she like got frantic. She got into an orgasm and stuff like that, and then they went to sleep. Like, oh, that was weird. So because of this oil, this oil actually represents the seed of the man, the sperm, because it's on, in the horn. The horn just looks like, uh, you know, an erect penis. So this is the matrix, the mating trick. So um, they did this, and then. In the morning, he discovered that, oh man, she's now big. Like, she just blew up. She just got so fat that she was swollen. And then when the, when the sun was shining, she started giving birth. So she started giving birth to grass. She started giving birth to bushes. She started giving birth to trees. And all of these plants grew to the heights of the heaven on the first day. Like, the trees were as high as the sky on the first day. And on... And, as soon as they were given birth, they would, they just grew. They become they became green and lustrous, and everything was just fully blown in them. And instantly, they had everything because they they had all of these fruits and all of these vegetables. And uh, Moetsi, because he's divine, he is the moon, and he's a man. Because in my language, what we actually say, a man, or in actually Bantu languages, every Bantu person says munu Moon, bantu is person and then what we say is munu which is moon moon is munu this is muetzi this is muetzi bedzi one so this is the first man he's the moon he's munu so uh this is where we get our humanity who knew munu so um so so yeah so everything just started growing out of her all of the apples and oranges and stuff. So this is how it happened that th these things were created and they were in love. And this guy is so smart. So he started farming, he started planting, started developing all of these things. Because when you have a, a creation story like this, you have to realize that the revelation is always with the person who is experiencing the life. So he is a self-revelator. He has no one to tell him what to do. And he's in constant communication with God. So, yeah, so this happens, and um, after two years, God is like, all right, dude, you know I told you that it's only for two years, right? So I'm taking her back, and then God took her, and then he put him, no, he put her, he put Masasi, the woman, into the, into the sea again, and then she just went. And then this guy started crying. He started crying for eight days straight. For eight days, or is it eight years? So he started crying and crying and crying, and then Maori is like, oh, "All right, fine. I feel, I feel, I feel bad for this guy because I created him. He's my reflection. So let's just give him another one." So then he gives him another woman. So two years, right? He lost Masasi, and then he gets the second wife too again. So this uh, second wife is called Morongo. So this Morongo woman is called the Evening Star. So. Uh, she comes and then she's smarter now. She's crazy smart. So she comes and then um, she just finds him in the cave and they're like, ah, oh, hi, what's up? Then like, no, I'm cool. Just had a wife and then I had my heart broken, but now I'm fine because now I got you, baby. And then um, they're like, ah, oh, cool. So then they just uh, chill around the fire a little bit. They just uh, have the fire and then they start talking and doing stuff like that. Um, this is the African creation story. So they start talking and then they want to they wanna sleep, right? Just like, just like this, the fire is in the middle, man is on one side, woman is on the other side. They are in that bond. This is the wedding ring. So they're like, ah, nah, this uh, Morongo, she's so clever. She's like, no, 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 don't sleep on that side. You have to come on this side. Come, come, come. And then it's like, okay, cool. So, um... So, so, so he goes on to her side and then he does the whole index finger thing again because when he touched her, you know, like, 
that uh, Da Vinci pacing when God touches man, that's the same thing that is happening. This is the African story from my country, Zimbabwe. This is from the Wahungwe people of Makoni. This is how they actually say it. And this is the story of Mwari and Mwezi and Munu. So one, two, and three. So <clears throat> when, um, when he touched her, she's like, nah, I'm not like your other chick, bro. You have to like switch it up because you don't have to do that. So she's like, get this oil, rub it on your actual loins, and then you lubricate it with that, and then we can do it. So they actually did it. So this guy liked it so much, then they did it and did it and did it. So they were just doing it like crazy. So after they did it the first time, they were, they were both so fertile with life, filled with life, that the first uh, night they did it, and the first night, um, the first morning <clears throat> after Morongo came, the first morning they gave birth to chickens, to sheep, to, 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 to like uh, 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 goats and stuff like that, right? And then the, the second night they did it again, man, did it again. And then they gave birth, and then she gave birth to, um, to, to, like, to like elands, kudus, cattle, stuff like that, bigger animals. And then the third night they did it again. And then uh, now they gave birth to boys. Huh. And then girls came out of her. Huh. So um, you have to realize that when they were being born, they were growing up on the same day. This is the African creation story. They were growing up on the same day. And uh, they were being given birth. And this, at the same time, they just, boom, they just grew up. So there was no time in this area. There was no time. But there was time because there was two years. <laughs> so this is crazy. So um, this happened. And then on the fourth day, there was this huge, huge uh, thunderstorm. And then God spoke to the man like, hey, dude, isn't I told you? I told you, Muetzi. I told you, Moon. Moonu. I told you. If you get out of the water, you're going to die. And now you're just uh, overdoing this whole sex thing. You have to really chillax. So please take it easy and don't uh, produce anymore because this is killing you, even though you're trying to give life. And then he's like, ah, fine, cool, I won't. And then uh, he just got so, so hot and heated and like, hey, Morongo, I want us to do this. What what can I do? And this is like, hey. Don't listen to God. You know what What we can do? Just uh, make a door in the cave. So it's either that they made a door in the cave or they made a roof in their dwelling so that God couldn't see them. So it's it's interesting to know that when, when the devil came on the earth, the first thing he did was create pandemonium. Pandemonium is actually literally uh, a shelter for demons. This is a house for demons. So this is... The first thing that the devil came to do is create a pandemonium. He created a roof over his head so that uh, no one could see what he was doing from above. So this is the same type of uh, thing that happened here. So <clears throat> he was like, all right, cool. So then they did that and then he, he, he closed the door and then they actually did it again, right? And then, of course, the morning came. They're both fertile and now... What she's giving birth to are like spiders, snakes, and scorpions, and lions, and tigers, and bears, and stuff like that. Then God is like, hey, Moetzi, um, I told you. I told you. You shouldn't do this. Then it's like, all right, oh, cool. All right, fine. And then they just live together, right? So now, what happened is that they were those four days, and then they just started living together. And then <clears throat> when Moetzi wanted, uh, wanted to have sex again, to Morongo, she's like, nah, like, look at your daughters. I think you should actually do that because, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not in the mood. So he's like, all right, cool. So then he did it because there were no rules like that, like that back then. So it's like, all right, cool. I'm the first man. I'll do it. So then he had so many kids with his kids that he ended up being the first ruler, the first king. Okay, Mwetsi, the moon, the moon, the first king. So. <clears throat> um, this happened and then he's like ha ah, you know what I really have love for this woman so let me go back to this morongo chick and then so he goes back to his circuit to his second wife but uh, the thing is while he was um, having relations with his kids what was happening is that uh, she was having a relationship on her own on the side that he knew about that everyone could see and uh, she was in love with a snake 
So she started started sleeping with the snake. So she started living with the snake. And then one day, <clears throat> Muet is like, hey, you're my wife, right? God gave you to me and me to you. So you're mine. So she's like, um, so I still want you. Do you want me? It's like, ah, uh, no, I, I don't. I have a new flame now. <laughs> so Morongo, uh, Muet is like, no, nah, there's nothing like that. So he raped her. He raped her. He raped her. So when he's in the act of doing it, the snake came and bit him. The snake bit him. Then he started getting sick. So when he started getting sick, everything in existence, the moon is sick. So everything in existence also started dying. So many people died. The The, the plant started withering. There was no more rain. And uh, uh, yeah, so so what happened is that he, his, his kids rolled the dice. There's this uh, special dice called Hakata. So then they rolled this dice to see what was what was actually going on, and then they discovered that uh, you know he's about to die. So they have to get a new leader, and uh, he has to be taken into the sea. So this is what happened. They took him into the sea, and they like strangled both of them, strangled the man and the woman, their parents, and then they buried them in the sea, and then they died. And then this is the African creation story. It's it's a, it's a it's an interesting story. So in all of this interaction, just like in the garden, we have a man, a woman, and a snake. And the woman caused some problems to the man. And then the snake added insult to injury. The snake delivered the kill bite. So this is the same thing that's happening. We have the morning star and the evening star. This is actually relating to the planet Venus, which has that aspect in terms of relation with the sun because this is the brightest planet in our in our in our in our, in our visual ray so we can actually see it so this is why it's called the morning star and the evening star so the morning star represents masasi which is the woman who is more controlled dignified and stuff like that she's cool right masasi and then the evening star is like the harlot the 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 eve like the one who is a bit um tricky to understand a bit too adventurous yeah the harlot and the virgin so the morning star is the virgin the evening star is the harlot and this is what it actually is and this is the african creation story it's actually the morning star and the evening star so this is how it's actually explained and <clears throat> the moon so it's actually talking about the planets so this is uh speaking about how the celestial bodies are created and everything in the stars in the sky is also as the things below so this african creation story from zimbabwe says that as above so below the things that are below are above munu is actually the moon this is why the three wise men looked for a sky a star in the sky so that they could see that a baby is being born on the earth jesus so this is the 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 story so <clears throat> i find it as a very interesting story the whole time just like in the garden God is only talking to the man. He never even talks to the woman. But the woman is expected to know every... And the woman actually knows. Like, Masasi is like, is like do this. Uh, Morongo, especially, is like, nah, do this. Do it like that. I like it like this. And she ended up uh, having relations with a snake. So, all of this is pretty interesting stuff. So, yeah, this is the African creation story from uh, the motherland, from the heart of the motherland, from the great Zimbabwe. So uh, this is how it went down and uh, how it's actually expressed. So Mwari is still the god. And uh, this god is sometimes confused with Mari, which is money. Just like God is confused with gold. This is the same thing that is continuously happening. So you just have to know and set your priorities right. Because if you don't, then you're going to be taken out. You know, so um, this is a story and it has so many dimensions with the number two because it's two years and two years and eight years. Eight is infinity. Eight is infinity. So eight is actually two cycles of zeros again. So that's actually two years. So it's an interesting story. Thank you a lot for watching this and I'll see you soon.